I think the debate over voter roll cleanup is really, really interesting because you need to do it, but there is an opportunity to exploit the system to remove legitimate voters so that they can't vote. They didn't know they were removed. In New York, I can't remember exactly which election it was, but several people I knew, I think it was the, it may have been the primary, it may have been Bernie. I know a ton of people who were posting and sharing with me on Facebook that they, were, they had been removed from voter rolls and they were really, really angry because now they weren't allowed to vote. And now we have this story from Fox News. Group threatens lawsuits over suspiciously high voter registration rates in swing states. I hope you're ready for November because this is going to get bonkers. Fox News reports exclusive voters in Florida, Michigan and Colorado are threatening to sue their states after an independent organization discovered that each has counties with unusually high voter registration rates. In some cases, they found more registered voters than actual people eligible to vote. Now, oh, hold on. <laughs> Wait. That could be explained. Um, sometimes people register and then they move. Sometimes people die and they're still in the voter rolls, which is why voter roll cleanup is so important. I think we saw a story, it may have been from Project Veritas, where some dude admitted that he had registered to vote in like Florida or something and then moved to New York. I can't remember the exact states. Voted in both because each state didn't know he was, re- he was registered. You can't do that. It's a crime. I think that guy got in trouble for it. But when, peop- when, when Republicans go to clean up voter rolls, you see Democrats then complain they're trying to suppress the vote. I'm not going to sit here and believe who's accusing who. who. The problem then becomes if you got dead people on the voter rolls, you got to remove them, right? If you got people who aren't citizens, you got to remove them. And that's happened. Let's read more. They say the data was compiled by the Honest Elections Project, a new nonprofit organization that blames the seemingly implausible statistics on a failure of states to properly update voter rolls to account for people moving, dying, or being incarcerated. There you go. Like I just said. The group examined publicly available registration records and compared it with citizen voting age data from the U.S. Census Bureau, describing the figures as suspiciously high. All three states have multiple counties where voter registration exceeded 90 percent. In some cases, they exceed 100 percent. In the last election in 2018, the nationwide registration rate, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, was 66.9 percent. That disparity is a clear sign these states aren't maintaining accurate voter rolls, said Jason Sneed, executive director of the Honest Elections Project. Sneed was formerly a, se- formerly a senior policy analyst at the Conservative Heritage Foundation. Fox News reached out to each state secretary or state's office, but none immediately responded. The organization's findings reveal that 27 counties in Florida have voter registration rates above 90 percent, well above the national average, and seven counties with rates higher than 100 percent. Michigan had 18 counties above 90 percent and one above 100 percent. Colorado had 19 counties above 90 and five above 100 percent. Now, I'll say this. If you got a county above 100 percent, yet that's probably wrong and you should go in there and clean up those voter rolls. 90 percent, however, while I do think it's very likely you've got some, you know, bad voter registration information that need to be cleaned up, it is also possible And don't let your hubris block block you that people are extremely riled up for their candidate and want to shut yours down. Florida, for instance, why would they have so many counties with with rates above 90 percent? Could it be that Bernie Sanders praised Cuban dictator Fidel Castro over his, I'm doing air quotes here, literacy programs, which are actually like indoctrination and re-education programs? Could it be that in some states people absolutely hate Donald Trump or could it be they absolutely love Donald Trump? Now, regardless of what the reason is, I think there's grounds to call for a cleanup. I am not. Here's the here's the problem Democrats have. You can't get me to immediately assume that just because someone's doing voter roll cleanup, they're doing it to suppress votes. And then if you and then if you tell me that you've got voter rolls with dead people on it and you want to clean it up, well, that sounds reasonable. So the burden is on Democrats to prove malice when Republicans aren't even accusing Democrats of malice. Now, some Trump supporters do accuse Democrats of vote of registering dead people. Sure. But it's easier for Republicans. They only need to say voter roll cleanup is normal. We need to get rid of people who have moved, particularly if they've moved. That's the most important thing. People who are dead. Look, they can't vote. They're dead. Someone might try and vote in their name because they don't need an ID that I understand. But I don't, I don't I'm not worried about that. What is a problem is if someone registers to vote in you know, Florida, then moves to Ohio and registers again, 
and Florida doesn't know, and they vote twice, that can and has happened. That's why you need voter roll cleanup. Now, if you're concerned about voter suppression, then, then be involved. Do a bipartisan thing. I don't want to tell you, man, but you, the burden is on you to prove it. They say in 2016 election, Hillary Clinton won Colorado by a relatively slim margin of 2.8%. President Trump won Florida by 1.3% and Michigan by just 0.4%. The observations led voters in each state to warn their respective secretaries of state that keeping ineligible voters on the rolls leaves the states vulnerable to improper activity during November's election. That warning came in the form of letters sent on their behalf from attorney William Consovoy, who has represented Trump in a number of matters. Retaining voter rolls bloated with ineligible voters harms the electoral process, heightens the risk of electoral fraud, and undermines public confidence in elections, the letter said. Consovoy noted that the National Voter Registration Act requires states to keep accurate voter rolls and provide for individuals to notify their states and then sue if action is not taken within 90 days, which the voters intend to do if necessary. Quote, we ask that you establish, if one has not already been initiated, a comprehensive and non-discriminatory list maintenance program in compliance with federal law, the letters each say. They call for the states to remove from their list of voters everyone who is ineligible because they moved, died, were incarcerated, or other reasons. The voters also requested that the states inform them of what measures they are taking to make these arguments in time for November's election. The practice of removing names from voter rolls has led to intense controversy and legal battles in numerous states. A Wisconsin court recently put that, the, that, uh, that states voter roll purge on hold as opponents argued the effort was targeted, the effort targeted voters in Democratic areas in a bid to suppress turnout. The ACLU says cleaning up voter rolls can be a responsible exercise, but some states have used it as a method of mass disenfranchisement, purging eligible voters from rolls or illegitimate reason for Ill illegitimate reasons or based on inaccurate data and often without adequate notice to the voters. Now, the GOP isn't going to sit back and let whatever it is happen, happen. We're seeing people formerly with the Heritage Foundation threatening to sue. We now have this story. GOP chairwoman suggests RNC plans to get litigious over push for national popular vote. Ronna McDaniel is coming out guns a blazing, saying those who want to get rid of the Electoral College will face a legal challenge from them because it would be disastrous for our country. And I happen to agree. Uh, reporting from the Hill, from the Hill, RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel said Thursday that she plans on being litigious in response to the national popular vote movement, saying, quote, I, or, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, yeah, OK. I think it is devastating to our country to get rid of the electoral vote. This is what the founding. Uh, this is what the founders intended for every state to have representation. McDaniel told attendees at the conservative political action conference during a panel, panel with Ted Cruz. Stay tuned because the RNC is not going to let this go. And there's something coming. Let me just say I have an intention to be the most litigious chair in history. I think what Democrats have done systematically to take away our rights to rig the election system and, and this to take away our votes, our electoral college votes, and have California and New York dictate who the next president of the United States is. Cruz said that he would, Cruz said that the push would probably be unconstitutional. McDaniel's comments come as leaders of the group, conservatives for yes on national popular vote, look to inform other conservatives about the movement at the conference. Many conservatives are skeptical of the popular vote, given that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote in 2016, while Trump won the Electoral College. However, the movement's leaders say that this agreement would not abolish the Electoral College. The electoral system would still be used, but electors would be distributed based on the national popular vote instead of the state's popular vote in the winner-take-all method. So right now we can see We've got two efforts, mostly uh, we got these efforts, mostly by conservatives. Well, the Democrats are concerned the system is being rigged against them. Conservatives are concerned the system is being rigged, against, rigged, rigged against them. I'm just going to have to I'm, I'm going to say this about the Electoral College and we can wrap this one up. Call it an early day. The Electoral College does weigh votes in a, in a different way. Like Wyoming technically has more value to their vote. Let's be real, though. California has you know, substantially more, more than 10 times the electoral votes. What do they have, like 53? And Wyoming has, what, three? So the issue is that many, many people keep moving to California and New York. But the reason why abolishing the electoral, the electoral college is stupid is that what if a ton of people leave California? They are. They're moving to Texas. They're moving to Colorado and Arizona. So then what? 
You're going to do the national popular vote. People are going to move into conservative, you know, districts and start being, you know, surrounded by more conservatives, adopting more conservative values. And then your state loses its power. It could be that this is the reason why they're pushing for the popular vote. Because if people leave California and California loses power and these liberals move to conservative states, the conservative states maintain those votes, if not gain more, and the state goes red. Ultimately, I think the Electoral College is an important check on making sure that California doesn't have disproportionate power, that the majority doesn't vote away the rights of the minority, and that sometimes it means a minority president wins like Trump or Bush. And yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. But California was only blue since 92. I believe it was 1992. So, so don't change the rules because you're having a knee jerk reaction to losing one election. You're nuts if you do. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Podcast every day at 6.30 p.m. And I will see you all then.